In this video, we'll be checking out the Elegoo Mars, a budget MSLA 3D printer, which took the resin 3D printer community by storm. You've no doubt seen many reviews already on this little 3D printer, but this is my review, and you might just want to hold off buying one. Maybe. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Views, and this is the Elego Mars. Resin 3D printers are very different beasts to FDM slash FFF 3D printers, so I made a little primer video to help you get up to speed here uh, before you proceed to this video. The Mars has a print volume of 120 by 68 by 155 millimeters, which is small indeed, but the magic of these machines is the incredible detail they're capable of reproducing thanks to the 2560 by 1440 pixel LCD mask, which effectively sets the resolution of the model in the XY plane. This LCD is considered a consumable by the way, and it is easily damaged and heat can kill it over time, but a new one is only 20 bucks and the replacement procedure is well documented. This machine cures 450 nanometer wavelength resin, and that's something you'll need to provide yourself as there's none included in the box. Getting the print plate perfectly leveled and at the right height for a good first layer is critical and thankfully fairly easy to do by loosening the grub screws holding the ball joint in place. The print plate design however is quite susceptible to being bumped out of alignment, it's just a ball joint. When removing prints use a metal spatula, don't even bother trying to use the plastic one on the build plate and I found holding the plate itself and not the ball joint did help prevent unintentional shifts. Build quality for the Elegoo Mars is overall quite nice, however there's some fairly annoying design choices. For a start, the cover just kind of sits in place, which means moving the machine can be a little tricky. It's great that you can access the entire mechanical structure if you need to, but I find myself often fumbling with the cover with gloves on, because you need to wear gloves when touching uncured resin, and a tiny handle or something would definitely have helped a lot. Or ideally, I'd just like a hinged door or something that I can easily access the print with one hand, because I'd really try to limit touching the uncured resin and I try to leave it to one gloved hand with uncured resin and the other to touch the interface so I don't smear it with um, Elegoo. Up front is a superb touchscreen interface and you load your slice models via USB. Where may you ask? Well, in the back of the machine of course, right next to the power switch. Talk about tedious, it's already hard enough keeping uncured resin off the interface parts of this machine without having to reach around the loosely fitted cover to access the USB and power switch. Having the USB port in the front would have been so much better, and that's totally not foreshadowing anything. Like other MSLA systems, this printer has to keep the UV LEDs cool, and it does that with a fairly loud cooling fan, which is on at all times. It's not too obnoxious, but it'd be nice to have it ramp up once the print's commenced and it's actually needed. The fan also tends to pull the resin fumes out of the machine and into the environment, so don't even think about using this in an enclosed space like your bedroom or where you work. This machine, like all other resin printers, need to be used in a well-ventilated and unoccupied room. Alrighty, now onto print quality, and initially it started printing, but nothing was happening. After freaking out somewhat and taking a good look inside, it turns out the firmware can glitch sometimes and not display anything on the LCD during a print, so a power cycle fixed it, so at least I know now, and maybe you do, if that happens to happen to you. So I started with a demo Rook print that Elegoo uses, and for my test I use Anycubic Skin Resin. And as I expected, the quality is wonderful, although the text was backwards. And I thought, again, I'd done something horrible, but as it turns out, a batch of these Elegoo Mars printers were shipped out with mirrored demo prints for some reason, so that's what I got, because all of my tests were done the right way around. I don't know how it happened, but there you go. For slicing, Elegoo recommends Chichu Box, and man, do I have to say, slicing for resin printers has come along in leaps and bounds in little over a year. You can now hollow objects and insert drainage holes right there in the slicer. You can even employ 3D infill and anti-aliasing is like a godsend. It almost completely removes the voxel-like print artifacts you used to see on earlier versions of this technology. It's honestly incredible and, at least for the moment, it's free. Lattice prints are much less of a challenge for resin printers compared to filament based ones, but this Christmas tree lattice at 50 micron layer heights has some incredibly steep angles and it printed with zero issues. 
Same goes for this Gator Anderson cat, which actually did require a small amount of support material that pulled away cleanly, and I hollowed this to 1.2 millimeter walls. My wash and curing process currently for a lot of these models is was pretty crude. So some of the models have glossy spots where it hasn't cured like quickly and been cleaned very well. I mean, it's fully cured, it just doesn't look great. So that's my fault, not the machine. Even 100 micron layer prints look really good with this Benchy coming out really quite nice with just a few imperfections perhaps. Um, there is a line along the hull that looks a bit strange, but I did the same G code or not G, is it G code? It is a G code and images on the EPAX and it has the same artifact. So I think that's the file, not the printer itself. But yeah, it's one of the cleanest 100 micron benches I've ever seen. The Z axis accuracy is critical in preventing layer inaccuracies, and Elegoo employs a low cost aluminum extrusion approach that seems to work well, but time will tell if it will experience any wear or uh, tolerance issues down the track. Now, this print was interesting. It's a Barbarian model by Maypole on Thingiverse, and the details are spectacular on the original 28mm height one and the 200% scale one, but she lost her leg, and then it eventually came free and recovered when it came in touch with the sword, which is pretty interesting because I've noticed the Anycubic resin I'm using needs some pretty serious curing time already, but I've been sharing identical G-code with Epax X1, and this was the print of that machine, so who knows what happened, maybe the FEP film wasn't very good in that area, and it just happened to stick. It did recover, which I said was very interesting, but apart from that issue, the whole print is just fantastic. I can see why you D&D guys are just nerding out over these machines because, man, are these printers perfect for printing scale model figurines. Oh, and just a heads up, resin prints can warp, which I didn't originally know before I got into this technology, especially while curing. Um, this tiny thin keyboard actually warped because it got a bit too hot in the UV sun and turned into a bit of a banana. And this Fallout 4 hollow tape similarly bowed out. So when it comes to hollowing models, they still need some support. So maybe that 3D infill is the best way to go. So just something to keep in mind that you will need to mitigate that if you're trying to print things that are ultra high accuracy or very thin and delicate. So, sounds like a pretty awesome machine for printing D&D miniatures and scale models, right? Well, you're not wrong, and the Elegoo Mars is regularly available for like down to $250 US. But, hold your horses, because well, Elegoo just recently announced this, the Mars Pro, and it basically fixes all of my complaints. USB port has been moved to the front, they've fitted a larger bed level locking screws for the ball joint to hold it in place better, a higher quality linear rail, more powerful matrix UV LED light sources, and now a carbon filter on the exhaust to help cut down a little bit of those resin fumes during operation. Now, this is a bit of a spanner in the works for this review, no doubt. Um, if you're not in a rush, honestly, I'd wait and grab the new one because it's going to be basically the same price, if not just a little bit more. But if you can find one of these at a really good price, which is likely to happen now, a new one's out, and you're happy to live with a few of those small usability complaints, it's still a great option. The print quality will be much, muchness, basically the same, I reckon. And you'll notice as I do more of these reviews of the small form factor MSLA printers, that it's really the usability improvements that will sway your opinion. They can all print a really amazing detail, because they all use roughly the same technology. It's just about how much they cost and how easy they are to run day to day. If you'd like to pick up the Elegoo Mars or the Mars Pro when it comes out in a month or so time, I'll put purchase links in the video description below. And full disclosure, Elegoo sent me this machine for purpose of review, free of charge. When I asked about the Pro, they said just go ahead and make the review as is. So here you go. I might be testing the newer one in future, I'm not sure. But if you don't want to miss future reviews, tutorials and projects, especially in the resin variety, then I'd love for you to subscribe because there's a lot coming here on the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.